Okay, this is uh, ENG 360, Hardware Description Languages, and today we're going to talk about Lab 3. If you look at uh, the PDF for Lab 3, what we're going to basically do is implement the priority encoder, which would be this truth table right here using a conditional assignment statement. We'll first do a simulation with a test bench file, and then we'll map it to hardware, so we have to put a UCF file in there. All right, after that, then what we're going to do is a um, 3 to 8 active low decoder. Notice it's active low. The outputs get asserted low when the corresponding uh, control inputs uh, have the respective value. So we'll do an active low controller uh, decoder, but instead of using the conditional assignment statement, we'll use the select assignment statement. And then the same thing, we'll do a simulation on that, and then we'll implement it uh, into hardware. All right? So first thing we need to do is the priority encoder and a simulation. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Minimize that. And let's see. Let's do a new project. And let's see. I'm going to call this, uh, let's see, Lab uh, 3 Demo. All right. And let's see. Make sure you got that Spartan uh, 500E, FG320, Spartan 3E, VHDL. Uh, let's see, yeah, we'll do 93 here, and next, finish, okay. All right, so we've set up uh, um, Lab 3. Notice that it's uh, empty right here, the Explorer. Now, let's change the implementation over to Simulation. We'll do that one first. I close down our Explorer window there. Let's kind of move this down, a little real estate, since we've got low resolution. So first thing you want to do is uh, New Source, Project New Source. I want a VHDL module, and let's see, what should we call this guy right here? How about a priority encoder, all right, priority encoder, does that look good? Priority encoder, all right, so let's do that. Now here, notice what you've got right here. We've been skipping this guy a lot, but let's actually use this. Um, you know, we usually canceled out and just went straight and typed it in. But notice, this basically sets up your entity. Now, in that priority encoder, I'm going to have a input called R, right? And it's going to be 4 down to 1. All right, now notice I can change in, out, or in, out. Uh, this is an input. Now, since it's 4 bits, standard logic vectored, I'm going to make this guy a bus. So I need to select the bus. The most significant bit would be 4. The least significant bit would be 1. Now, the priority encoder also has an output. I think we called that P. And that guy was three bits. Uh, it's an output, so change that to out. Select bus. And I think we called, let's see, the most significant bit two and the least significant bit zero. So I'm basically just inputting my inputs and outputs, right? All right, let's just do next and then finish. Now, look what happened. Because I used that little uh, window that we've been ignoring up to now, it actually stubbed out an entity for me. Let me get rid of all my comments. And there you go. It actually put this port statement inside our entity block, and um, we didn't have to type that in. So that's kind of nice. Well, let's see. The priority encoder, um, that's a pretty easy thing to do. And um, we could use our uh, conditional signal assignment statement. And we could say, well, that's equal to 1. Is there actually, let me just, uh, yeah, OK. It's equal to, let's see, 1, 0, 0 when um, r4 equal 1 and you come down here do an else and let's see it would be equal to what um, uh, 0 1 1 okay. let's see when let's line these guys up when requester 3 asserts right all right requester 3 is asserting else it would be equal to let's see uh, 2 when requester 2 is asserting okay. else it would be equal to let's see what about uh, 0 0 1 when requester 1 is asserting and let's see is there an else here how about um, uh, here we'll put 0, 0, 0 when nobody else is asserting. So the thing to note here is that um, we have these four lines coming in. When one of them is asserting, then we set the uh, P code at the output. This tells me requester 4, requester 3, requester 2, requester 1, and this tells me no requesters requesting. And that's it. You've implemented a priority encoder with uh, one conditional signal assignment statement and um, 
Yeah, and the uh, priority, uh, the entity block got filled out for you in that little dialog blocks. Great. So the next thing to do is um, set up a uh, test bench. But let's go ahead, save that, select it, come down to the processes block, and make sure we typed everything in okay. Mm -hmm. All right, that's good. So now let's come along here and add a test bench file. Where's our test bench file? Let's see, we need to add a new source. Got to make it test bench, so we'll call this guy tb underscore priority encoder. It'll be my test bench file. Make sure test bench is selected. Now it's going to say what component you want to test. Well, we only have one component in here, priority encoder. All right. So finish that guy up, and then look at your explorer window right here. There's your component priority encoder. That's your priority encoder dot vhd and it's being tested by TB Priority Encoder. Okay, So I've got my Priority Encoder file open. Let's just get rid of all the comment statements for now since we're just trying to learn basic VHDL. Okay. There's your library block. On test bench files, the entity block is empty. Okay. Now you have to come down to here. You have to declare the component that you're going to test. There's your declaration. And then these are your test signal. I like to change these to test bench, prefix them with test bench inputs and outputs so I can distinguish which are my local variables and which ones come from the uh, actual component. We're not using clocks yet in the course. We will. Okay, so we get rid of that. Now here, notice up above you had to declare it. And the easiest thing to do is just copy over the entity block and replace entity with component. Now down here inside the begin block, you've got to instantiate it. So there's a difference between declaring and instantiating. And here we actually create an instance of this guy. We use the port map statement. We map the components variables to the variables in this current module, which are TBR and TBP. Okay, so let's change those guys to TBR and TBP. Okay. We don't need a clock process, so we can get rid of that guy. Okay. And there is our simulate process. Well, we just kind of brute force it right here. And what we can do is, um, you know, we come down here. Let's get rid of some stuff here. All we need to do is keep that last wait statement in there. Otherwise, this guy's going to execute over and over. And we can come along here and say R takes on the value of uh, maybe 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. And then what we'll do is we will wait for 20 nanoseconds. All right. Now, we've got four bits there, so how many possibilities do we have? Well, we got a whole bunch, don't we? Let's see, we can, there's one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, all right? And let's just change all these values respectively. Let's see, that would be zero. This guy down here would be one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And 15, and there you go. We just uh, set the input and we wait for the output. So, for example, this guy right here, requester 321, are um, asserting. So, we should probably get um, um, three at the output on P code. All right, let's save it. Oh, we got some errors here. We better go check and see what our errors are. So, let's see, I've got to wait for 20 nanoseconds. It looks like I didn't put a semicolon on all these guys. And then I copied that all the way down. Well, that's easy enough to fix. Okay, put a semicolon on there. All these guys, everything's got to have a semicolon. All right, let's save it and see if the errors go away. Great, they do. Okay, so what we have to do is let's go select our component, priority encoder, and let's check to see that uh, it compiles okay, which we did. Now let's select the test bench, make sure that guy's selected, and do check syntax on that guy. All right. Uh, looks like we have some. Uh, we still got some errors there. Uh, what's going on? Oh, okay. I know what the problem is. Yeah. 
you remember we um, we called the test bench file TBR. All right, so let's do that. Let's copy that guy, and the test bench file is the one you got to change in here. These are all good errors. They kind of give you a little insight into what's going on here. All right, change all these guys. And then we got the last one. But because we change those file those variables in the test bench, we also have to change them when you instantiate it. And okay, we did that. All right, so let's save that. Uh, let's go back and compile our component. Always make sure these guys are always up to date. Select the test bench, compile that guy. And now let's uh, make sure your test bench is selected and then simulate. Double click simulate behavioral model. That'll bring up a whole separate program or separate process. Another window on top of this one. And let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there it is. Let's kind of shrink it down a little bit there. Okay. Shrink it down here. Do go up to top, say zoom to view. And let's see. There you go. Let's see. Does that make any sense right here? Um, yeah, I'm actually going, let's see, if I do zoom to view, it should just give me, uh, actually, I'm going one microsecond, but I'm changing every 20 seconds, huh? Yeah, let's see, get it all up there. Yeah, so really what I'm doing on my input is I'm counting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then you'll notice that all the, the most significant bits are set here, so the output is 4. Okay, normally on this guy here, you know, a lot of people, we put a wait statement at the end. But if you're, um, all you're waiting, 20 nanoseconds, doesn't fill up that one microsecond time, we get that previous picture where we have a huge wait at the end. An alternative to using the wait statement is to put something like this in here to, to explicitly terminate the simulation. You can do either one, whichever one you want. I tend to like this one here because what it does is when I do zoom to view, it zooms out on exactly what I have and I don't have any leftover stuff. And it basically says assert false, which means just stop the simulation and then you can report an error here. But let's uh, do that now. If I um, Let's go back and uh, compile everything. And let's compile this guy right here. And then uh, let's simulate. And now if I do zoom to view, it took my 300 nanoseconds and it zoomed it to the entire window, even though I had one microsecond up here. And that, that makes more sense. So when the uh, input is um, zero, all zeros, um, we assert, we output zero. When uh, we have a one, we output a one. When we have a two, we output a two. A three, we output a th two. And then when four, five, six, and seven are input, then that means bit three is set and we output a three. And then four, eight, or no, eight, nine, A, B, C, all the way up to F, bit four is set, so we output a four, okay? Now what you can do here is open up these bits and actually look at the individual traces. So at this point right here, requester one is asserting, so we output a one. Requester two is asserting, we output a two. Requester one and two are asserting, we output a two because 2 has priority over 1. Requester 3 is asserting, we output a 3. Requester 3 and 1, 3 has priority, we output a 1. Requester 3 and 2 are asserting, 3 has priority, we output a 3. Requester 1, 2, and 3 are asserting, well, we give it to 3. Here, requester 4 is asserting, we output a 4. Requester 4 and 1 are asserting, we output a 4. Requester 4 and 2 are asserting, we output a 4. Requester 4, 2, and 1, we give it to 4. 4 uh, 2 are asserting, we give it to 4. 4, 2, and 1 are asserting. 4, 3, and 2 are asserting, we give it to 4. 4, 3, 2, 1, everybody's asserting, but we give it to 4. All right, there you go. That ends the uh, priority encoder simulation.